the question is a patient complains of foul smelling purulent discharge from the site of the mandibular first molar extracted three days back the gingival margins around the socket are extremely sensitive to touch the appropriate treatment of choices so what we need to remember is the key point over here is a foul smelling purulent discharge the mandibular first molar and that an extraction was done three days back so it could be that the patient is someone who has undergone a traumatic extraction three days ago why am i saying that is because the gingival margins around the socket are extremely sensitive to touch that means there was severe laceration of the gingiva and they are failed to approximate the lesion that is the wound socket and they are able to unable to heal completely and from this region you are having a purulent discharge that means there is some pus that has been occurred because of which there is uh, some form of infection that is present in that region so the answer basically what the diagnosis in this condition is basically what we call as dry socket also known as alveolar ostitis so in this is a condition that is seen usually after a traumatic extraction most commonly it is seen in the region of the mandibular third molars because you need an extensive surgery if they are disimpact if they are impacted so disimpaction surgeries usually require more extensive removal of bone and that is the reason it is very difficult to approximate these lesions and at the same time it is uh, much more traumatic to the patient as opposed to a normal extraction moreover the blood supply in the region of the mandible is much lesser as compared to the maxilla because the maxilla has multiple collateral venous sorry uh, collateral blood supply whereas the mandible does not have so and the density of the mandible is much more thicker than that of the maxilla which is porous in nature which can lead to further problems so amongst the options over here the answer will be irrigation of the socket and we'll get into that later first let's just look at the options for the answers irrigation of the socket with a sedative placement along with an analgesic curettage of the socket to induce bleeding left untreated and observed for a few days and start with antibiotics usually when it comes to dry socket one of the most acceptable and easily used treatment outcome for such patients is to place a sedative dressing in order to decrease the pain that is the first most important uh, protocol that we are supposed to follow because when a patient is in pain they are extremely anxious and it is very difficult to convince such a patient to undergo further treatment so the most important criteria is first to disc disc decrease the pain of the patient therefore the answer is one why do you irrigate the socket is because there would be a lot of food debris that would have been accumulated over the past few year, days of the extraction in addition to that the clot which was supposed to be formed would not have been formed which could lead to further problems and it would not lead to he complete healing of the wound that is the reason why answer one is the correct answer over here now what we need to remember about dry socket is the dry socket that is formed is basically due to in general when you is due to loss of the clot so in general what happens is when you have extract the tooth there is bleeding that occurs in that place the blood clots the clot retracts and that leads to further events of healing whereas in dry socket what exactly happens is the clot that was supposed to be formed and retracted gets lost this lost clot is unable to help in the healing of the wound and socket remains open and leads to ingress of bacteria and debris which can lead to this particular condition the patient will have a dull throbbing pain and he'll be at complete unease which leads to further irritation that is why when in such cases what we do is we place an obturant such as zinc oxide eugenol into the cavity and the patient's pain is first relieved followed by which once the pain is relieved the irrigation helps in clearing and flushing out of the debris and it also helps in inducing bleeding to some extent once this is achieved the clot formation that has to occur occurs normally and it un retraction undergoes and finally there is bone formation and healing that proceeds in a normal fashion